When chemistry is electric, <laughs> nature's shrill hum is trilled on the backs of a thousand bugs. The hills surrounded like an emerald blanket fort. Caves spill forth tears from mountain ghosts. Crystal clear liquid glass rivers kiss. On naked skin, free like the wind. Hi, my name is Flossie. I'm a bi-hemispherical traveller. Living in British Columbia, Canada in my home-built van, my tiny home on wheels. I'm back in New Zealand right now, travelling the length of the country in a van. And I'm excited to share with you this magical, subtropical country where I was born. Hi! Hi! It's been so nice to come visit! Same. See you soon! So we just spent a beautiful day doing some kayaking in the Marlborough Sounds, which was amazing. You can see that the uh, Cook Strait Ferry comes in through the Sounds there. And we spent a night, two nights actually, up around a bay up here, which is beautiful. And now we're going to do the journey all the way to Nelson to see my auntie and my one of my best friends from my early 20s we've got some travel up here some travel over to here somewhere Greymouth, and then eventually down by the springs to Christchurch so much more of the country though that we're not really gonna get to I was anxious to see and reconnect with folks who meant so much to me in my young adulthood that I found it really hard to articulate who they were and what they meant to me. Everything is amplified tenfold when I'm traveling on the road and I would get bored of a life lived any other way. Never underestimate the impact you can make on a person by being the one who shows up for them in full support. It doesn't matter if you don't understand or if you don't have any lived experience in your life of the things that they're going through. Being the one person who just says, I don't care what anyone else thinks, I love you, can make all the difference and keep somebody alive. I'm so, so lucky to have had people who have unconditionally loved me throughout the years in my life.
Travel is a very big test for a lot of people. And making it through is a real marker of a relationship built on trust that will stand the test of time. You emerge at the other end, perhaps a little scorched by homesickness and hardship, but able to survive and make your way through almost any tricky circumstances. And when you find a friend or re reconnect with an old one, you never ever forget them. Take me to the countryside to mingle with the animals, to go horseback riding on the biggest clouds dale there is, and camp on the mountain top. Take me away from this hopelessness in a place of peace, of quietness. Take me away from this desolation and find a way to solve this confusion. I want to be free, free from this burden and misery, so take me with you before you leave. Soak me in nature and replenish my aching soul. Purge my agonizing wound and dis distill my sorrowful tune. My soul yearns to drown the chaos of an external environment, mineral water and running streams, crashing waves and singing birds, strumming guitars and melodious flutes, singing in harmoniously, whispering the truth lead me to a place of comfort, a place where I can breathe, a place of beauty and incomparable dreams. I wish I were a glowworm. A glowworm's never glum. Cause how can you be grumpy when the sun shines out of your bum? Went for a beach horse ride today and it was so, so lovely. It was hot sun, but I was well protected from burning. And my horse was such a sweetie, a beautiful big Clydesdale. And I just thought he was so gorgeous. And I snuck him lots of apple snacks and treats and pats and rubs. And came down here for some dinner and beverages found this uh, mead and on our travels down which I think is super delicious and it's absolutely stunning out such a beautiful sunset and this bay is surrounded by mountain ranges on both sides we came over one of them and it was quite the twisty twirny twisty turny little road but ocean is beautiful and after lots of driving it's nice to slow down be in this area for a number of days see my auntie and one of my best friends and my soul feels recharged and I am enjoying the vitamin D after the winter but look at this because the sand flies have been biting my ankles and so I'm wearing socks and jandals on the beach <laughs> so why is it that sometimes your worst days are swiftly followed by your very very best ones we all have to find our own way to balance and happiness through these ups and downs 
For me, I have found that over and over again that stability, peace, and quiet are what I need most when I need to find balance. Now, if it's not already obvious, that almost always this does not coincide with how I travel. Look at that beautiful mountain. Just before we heard the squawk of Pukekos fighting and now that I've turned the camera on, as usual, they've gone quiet. It's like all birds get stage fright when you start filming. Bye beach! I stop, they squawk, I keep walking, and turn the camera on, they shut up. I stop, they squawk, and it's a cool sound. Oh well. <laughs> Salivation, heat, I like it. Treating me like I'm a total egg. Nest of bipolar. <laughs> it's these periods of time away, outside of my comfort zone, a little overwhelmed, a little overstimulated, a little overtired, that make the restoration of balance so much more beautiful. The feelings of being home so much more precious. And the feelings of being loved so much more whole. I don't know about you, but I'd rather ride on a roller coaster through life than drive on a flat highway in cruise control. Just make sure you stay on the road, at least most of the time. So, you guys doing Tata Beach next? Tata's! No! Even in the underwater world here, though beautiful and feeling amazing on my naked skin, swimming in the tropical, beautiful, clear, crystal blue water, it is different to the world I'm used to. Knowing that the lurking of a painful, dangerous, stilling jellyfish, sharks, or a huge tropical fish that I've never seen the likes of before is a thought that blows my mind. Swimming out to a buoy and back feels daunting, yet exhilarating at the same time. I don't know what the sea life looks like here, like I do at home. I don't know the names of these creatures, like I do at home. And I guess that means for now, for now, this is not my home. I'm yet still a visitor from afar. Why is this, you ask? Didn't you live here? Aren't you from here? Well, yes, but when I was here, I was young. I lived in the city. I loved the nightlife. I enjoyed concrete jungles, dark clubs, flashing lights and resounding music. Now, I enjoy wide open spaces, green treed forests, deep blue oceans that are cold, murky, and filled with life, wonder, and excitement. I was not into those things when I lived in New Zealand. So for me, they are connected so deeply with the home I have here. gonna leave another piece of my heart in Golden Bay and it's beautiful here 
little stone altar. Some sparkly things, a sea unicorn, some of the most beautiful yellow quartz crystal. This beautiful piece, beautiful textures of flat rocks. Mm. Happy. Like, look at the color of this. So beautiful and golden. I hope I'm going to be able to come back with a piece, but I'm just not sure. And another nice campsite on the beach. There's a pirate! Aside from the hundreds of millions of sandflies, which are enjoying my skin as a snack. So we got some this. It's the most lovely place to be. I feel like when we planned to come to New Zealand there's this thing about wanting to see so many places that you almost over schedule um, we had originally planned travel one day see friends or family the next day and then no driving the next day and it's kind of ended up a little faster than that but here we've slowed down and it is beautiful beach I'm tired traveling <laughs> every so often people complain when they travel because it's exhausting having so much fun <laughs> and a lot of driving but this bush here is really beautiful and now we relax and stop moving and enjoy Sitting around at home, you can, you can always, always tell, tell when one of the trips is taking off his gum boots. Up to the belt, that's it. You weren't for your gum boots, where would you be? You'd be in the hospital or infirmary. <laughs> When I came back to New Zealand, there was a huge part of my heart and soul that was looking for the pieces of my heart I'd left behind. Not quite like a Horcrux, but more of where do I feel at home? Where was my home? Where did I? And where do I belong? Was I going to visit a new place in the country and feel some sort of huge magnetic pull? Was my heart yearning for the places I'd left behind? Wow. More than anything, I think what I found is that my home is in the hearts of those left behind. It'll be forever a time and a place that I hold dear. But the right now, it isn't where I need to be, where I'm pulled or where I'm called. I've heartbreak there, loss, grief, difficult relationships with those who don't love and understand the whole me in my queerness, wildness, and campy fabulosity. I miss the little ones, the dear ones who I hold close in my heart and know that at any time I can come back and my heart will be at home with them. And for that, I am very grateful. 
Takaka Hill, known also as Marble Mountain, is a mountain full of caves and the surrounding areas are many beautiful clear rivers and springs. They are some of the largest freshwater springs in New Zealand and nearby is one of the largest cold water springs in the southern hemisphere. The springs are located on the other side of the hill near a town called Takaka and are a sacred water, Wai Tapu, a sacred place to the local Maori tribe. Ponamu is a hard, highly valued green stone found mainly as boulders. It is also called New Zealand Jade. It is only found in the South Island and is very important to the tribe of this area, Naitahu. The boulders are often found in or near rivers. Wow, no, that's beautiful. Just comes out of a deep spring way into the cave system of the mountain. As in sacred tradition, this necklace no. was given to me by my brother, a very special and very precious piece of jewellery, and so precious to take a part of New Zealand with me that I can always have and carry on me. I have a carved toki, which is a type of blade symbolising a sense of determination, control, supporting the wearer with strength, focus and hope. We went to a beautiful spring, emerging deep from under Takaka Hill's many cave and river systems. This pool is sacred to Maori folk, and as a sign of respect, no swimming is allowed here. Joyous screeches can be heard from the families and children, swimming in the waters further downstream in the rock pools below. We have come here to cleanse and bless our greenstones. The spring is hapu, or sacred. Waiora, pure. Maori women used to come here to bathe and cleanse themselves in sacred ways. A ritual story I hear told to me by my best friend and my auntie, who has also lived in the area for years. As I don't have these ancestral stories directly, all I know is that the sacred rituals may have included preparing for birthing or fertility, or in bathing in honour of sacred womanhood. The magic and sacred beauty is not lost on us here. As we honour the waters and our precious green stones, speaking respect and gratitude for these beautiful gifts from the earth. I'm here at my best friend Bron's house, and I'm here with Cedar. And Cedar's gonna show us a couple of circus circus tricks. Yeah, I guess so. Yeah, because you're a little tree monkey. Yeah, I do gymnastics. And you're very clever, and I wish I was as bouncy and bendy as you are. So, we've just woken up in the morning, and Cedar's going to show us some tricks. So I'm going to get off the trampoline here, and you've got this awesome rope set up. Climbing up the um, jungle gym, the one we were like, that's pretty amazing. Hang on, wait, wait, wait. There you go. Wow, you're so strong. Oh, you're being a real monkey now. is very high. Woo! Oh my gosh. And <laughs> I just made up this one this morning. That's awesome. Give me a high five. We use this for the first time, which converts 
this fitting, fitting into household fitting. And it's got a big old fuse in the middle, which is awesome. I want to talk about the reason that I ever started to live in a van in the first place. Yes, I just moved to Vancouver and was struggling with being there. Where to be, having no friends or community and wanting to travel. But this van, or more house truck, Kaya, was owned by my best friend Bron in New Zealand and was a spark, the wee dot of hope that I'd seen before that gave me permission to start on this adventure. I think she's beautiful, an old classic, slowly being brought yeah. back to life, cared for, loved and restored over many years. She's gotten a whole new roof, windows out of a pirate and ship. these ones with the mud on my childhood house because I ran out of this one. And soon we'll have a quite fireplace, a fridge and a whole new interior slowly being built with love. She's not everybody's dream, but this beauty and my friend's love for her set my heart alight with a desire to set out on my own journey and consider housing options out of the societal norm, carving my own way in this world, inspired by possibilities endless. If you want real-time updates, as we're a few weeks behind real time here, jump over to my Patreon. If you enjoyed this video, hit the thumbs up button and subscribe. But remember, no one is here to make you. And I'll see you all next week. Bye.